<laughs> welcome everybody to episode four of TNG. We have Eugene here, and this is actually my first time meeting Eugene. We've been Instagram friends for a while, so why don't you introduce yourself, Eugene, to everybody that's watching the show? Okay, my name is Eugene Teddy Makoha, and uh, I am from Kenya, Kenyatta University, which is found in Kiambu County, yeah, near Nairobi, the capital city. So I'm a student of English literature and uh, Chinese language and uh, Taijichuan. And uh, I'm a fourth year student in English literature and uh, about Chinese language. I am at level three, HSK level three. And uh, Taijichuan, uh, I've been to China for about three weeks for training where I met international friends. Yeah, so I'm happy to be on this show. Thank you for welcoming me. Yeah, it's funny how the universe works bringing us together because we've been uh, following each other on Instagram for a while and haven't talked really at all. But uh, I got really yeah. excited when I first created the show, was really looking forward to having you on because I saw that you have been to China and studied Tai Chi Chen and your English is excellent, by the way. Your English is good, so good work on that. The, the yin yang shirt is good. So I'd love for yeah. you to uh, share with us a bit about your experience with, with Tai Chi Chen. Okay. My experience is uh, I started learning Tai Chi, tai Chi Chen in 2018, okay. in April. That is uh, after um, there's a, a classmate and a friend of mine was killed on the streets when we were walking out at night. So the following day we were very shocked. It was a big shock because we thought it was a joke. So we ran away and uh, left him. Then the next day we found that he was there. He was lying on the ground dead. So together with a friend, the guy that I was there with is Muslim. I'm Christian and he's Muslim. So we, we both joined the Chinese Institute at Kenyatta University to start learning Tai Chi Chuan. But then my Muslim friend dropped out of Tai Chi Chuan. So I was left alone, but still I found other friends there. So we lunched it together. There was a Chinese master. There were two Chinese masters. There's uh, Mr. Wang Sen and uh, Yu Hai Tao. So they were good to me. They helped me to learn Tai Chi Chuan. I performed for the institute at the university and the Chinese embassy. Then later on, I, I won a, a place to go and visit China for a summer camp, Taiji Chuan summer camp. So when I reached there, I was surprised. It was my first time traveling outside of Kenya. Actually, I've never gone outside of Kenya. <laughs> so it was the first time for me to get a passport and a visa to go to China. And there I found that there were um, other students from more than 20 countries who are Taiji Chuan practitioners. Mm -hmm. So together we, we made a good team, we worked together as friends. So for the two weeks that we were together, we experienced Chinese culture, tea drinking ceremony, we engaged in uh, Taiji Chuan practice. So we visited Beijing. Beijing, there was more about Chinese tea, performance, yeah. And uh, the way we, we visited some, some of the historical places like the Forbidden City, the Great Wall of China. Then later on, we went to Henan province. And the Henan province is where they say that most of China's history is located. So there we went to a place called uh, Jiaozuo, where Chen style Tai Chi Chuan is mostly practiced at Henan Polytechnic University. So there I learned more Chen style Tai Chi and uh, it was a good time. Yeah, I made so many friends there also. So after that, I remained calm. When I came back, I still, I still went back to school yeah, at the university because I knew that I still have a big task ahead. Yeah, then all of a sudden there was quarantine, there was coronavirus, I was shocked. So 
I could not do anything. I had to continue living. So uh, I thank you today for calling me to this meeting so that I can share with you my experience of each one and how I started meeting people like you. Because one day I was on Instagram and I saw that you, I saw your page, your call, Oracle. Oh, and then I was surprised. I was like, I've never met a guy from England. It's not easy to meet a guy from England who, who also likes Taiji Chuan and uh, this. Yeah. So I, was, I started following you and I was following your posts. I thought it was a joke because I thought maybe you are just, yeah, because in this part of the world, we are, social media is not so much serious for us. Mm. We just post there your success. <laughs> so I did not know that you were serious as a teacher. But with time, I can prove that you are a serious teacher. Yeah. So thank you so much for today. And uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, just a bit of, um, for everyone watching, Tai Chi Chuan, like Eugene has studied, is a martial art. So it is called an internal martial art. Now I've practiced yes. uh, Gojuru Karate and I've practiced Shaolin uh, martial arts, Kung Fu, and also internal arts like wow. Qigong and Tai Chi Chen, not as uh, in depth as Eugene has, but just a bit about the difference between Tai Chi and Qigong because both of them are kind of interlinked a lot, is Tai Chi Chuan is a yes. martial art used also as an internal art. So you're using your chi, your energy, to fight and to defend yourself. But more commonly nowadays is used for health, is used like qigong, is used for medical reasons. So we have many people using tai chi, especially elderly people, terminally ill people using Tai Chi, the soft, gentle martial arts movements for their well-being. Now, Qigong is specifically internal. It's not external. It's all for internal energy cultivation, internal energy healing, energy strengthening. All of these things happen during Qigong. So Tai Chi Chuan masters will practice Qigong. And it's sort of like a, like a circle, like the yin yang on, on Eugene's shirt. It's a mutually beneficial practice for both. So I would love to hear from you, Eugene, about uh, what you feel like Tai Chi Chuan, your studies have, how has it, affected your life positively? Yeah, for me, initially, I, I was thinking about my outside uh, appearance. Yeah, because mostly, in most cases, we are meeting other people from other races, the classmates. So I was, initially, I used to think about how the people look at me, yeah, how I can impress them, you see? Yeah, and also like, for example, when I'm at home with my parents, I think, ah, I need to go to church, I need to do this thing so that they can be happy. But when I started learning Tai Chi, I realized that it's more about the inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that if I'm happy and also my internal organs, because normally in Tai Chi, you are you try to focus your breath with your body on the inside. Okay. It's not about the way you are hitting somebody from the outside. Yeah. It's not about hitting because in Tai Chi, they, there's no opponent. You just practice for your own body. So I realized that my internal organs start to feel better and I relax, I feel good. So with the time, I, I also realized that I start to meet new friends. And when I meet someone who's new, I'm more calm. Yeah, I can introduce myself. I can talk about myself. And uh, it was not about how much money I have or what, what I have, the car that I, I don't have any car, I don't have anything. So when I started learning Tai Chi, I realized that I can get anything for free. I don't have to buy money. If I want a friend, I can get this friend. I don't have to use money. Yeah, because I can, I can make them realize that anyway, we are born without anything. So we are just human anyway, we, we need that energy. So I also started feeling the internal energy when you're connecting with someone. That when they talk to you, you can feel that their energy is low. They need to recharge. Yeah. For example, if they want to force something, you feel like they want to force it. So 
I have to abandon them because if I continue engaging with them, they are going to force it on me, then it's going to overburden me. So well, with Tai Chi, I've, I've changed my life a lot. I've realized so many things about even my own lecturers, my, my friends at college, at university, the others that dropped out. I realized that we are all in the same journey and school is just another thing for the work, yeah? So it's more about yourself and how you achieve your, your well-being, yeah? It's about yourself and how you connect with the others. It's not about how you go to impress the people at work or you want to go and impress the lecturers. You can impress the lecturers, you get all the marks. You can get a distinction at college, but when you go to the life outside, it's more difficult. Or you can, you can get a first class, then you become the most corrupt guy. So <laughs> it means that you have a problem with yourself. You are suffering, actually. You are dying. Like Someone needs to help you. So it's not about the marks. Uh, when I started learning Taiji, I realized that the guys that uh, like really love me for sure, they're not the guys that give me money, or they're not the guys that tell me to do something that is going to shock the world or do whatever. But the guys want to force me to do these incredible things and whatever. I realize that they still have a problem and uh, I have to, to interact with them gently and to help them realize that it's not that we want to show the whole world or whatever. Okay, so Tai Chi has really helped me. And uh, thank, thank you for, for coming to, to increase my awareness. Okay. Thank you for this moment. <laughs> yeah, likewise. It's, it's so similar to what, what I've experienced through through Reiki, the Reiki healing, which was the beginning for me into really practicing energy arts. And then through Qigong is yeah. you start to feel more than just your brain organ. It's something that I heard you talking about is you, you start to learn that there's more intelligence to your body than just the brain. Western society is so obsessed with brain 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 and whoever has the biggest iq yeah. and the biggest wallet gets this or that but when you come into awareness of like as you're saying becoming more happy in your organs not just happy in your brain but happy in your heart and happy in your organs and your blood and your body you start to experience a deeper connection yes. and same experience like you had is Qigong and Reiki has opened up so many doors to meeting new people directly so yes. directly from energy. It's not even, I'm sure you could say the same thing is, it's not even looking. There's no looking, there's no reaching outward for these new friends or new yeah. connections or new money or this or that other thing. It's just through the internal, as you're saying, through the internal, this energy cultivates all that we were looking for. It was already inside of us. And as we cultivate more energy and feel better about ourselves, then the outside world starts to shift. So I wanted to yes. ask you a bit about some of the things that you learned, some wisdom that you've learned from, from your masters. You said you met some master teachers in uh, China. Okay, I, I, what I learned from the teachers in China is that the first thing is that we as human beings, like we have a history, yeah? We have an origin, there's somewhere that we come from, okay? So we have the outside skin, for example, I'm black and you are white, but we have an origin that is very common yeah, because we are all like, um, we are living in the same world, we have the same problems. For example, now, the coronavirus is across all races. <laughs> the, the world, we have the same sky, yeah. So I learned that we have an origin and we need to connect. We cannot avoid it. There's no way we can avoid to connect. I feel like um, we always want to look for an excuse to isolate ourselves yeah, and to do things uh, separate from the other guys. but still we have the same destiny because we are, for example, the thing about heaven. All races and all religions are talking about heaven, but they don't know the, the common heaven where it is. So that is a common thing that we, we, we have not found a common ground. 
Yeah. So I feel like we have to find a common ground because I saw that they, when I went to China, the Chinese were so free with me, the children and the older guys, because in most cases, they have never seen a black man. Yeah. Because their country mostly is closed, most of the places, because China is like a continent, actually. It's not big like Africa, but it's like a continent because every area, due to communism, every area has their own culture. They have their own tea, their own food. Yeah. So as, as much as we can say, now this is Africa, this is America. Remember that even in China itself, it's like a continent and uh, the different provinces or whatever, they are like, yeah, they are isolated in some way. They, are, they have different cultures. So I learned that uh, there's no way you can avoid this thing of coming together to find common solutions. Yeah, so I feel that um, even though some of, some of my people like in Kenya, you know, for example, our country, we have so many loans and whatever, but the problem is that maybe the people are focusing on the money rather than the exchange program because we need to interact with these people. Don't just ask for money. You, you can ask for money, but the money will get finished. <laughs> so we, they were supposed to connect. You need to ask this guy, what kind of business are you doing? What work do you do? How is it that you Chinese have, you are, the value of your money is, is low? Because the Chinese, uh, the Chinese yen is like uh, 15 Kenyan shilling, you see? And yet the, the pound and the euro is very high. The euro, recently the euro was at 130 Kenyan shilling, but the Chinese yen is at 15. And why is it that you are still borrowing in China? Why can't you go and borrow the euro? So I think that you are, we were wrong. You are supposed to interact with these people and ask them. We, we need to ask them how to give to, to fish instead of asking for the fish. Because we ask for the fish, we finish the fish. Then they know, ah, now they're going to ask for another fish. Now they say, ah, we, let, let's now give you a bigger fish. Mm. Okay? And when you finish the other fish, you come and take your, your uh, they give you the fish, they come and take your fishing lines and everything. Yeah, no, we don't know that. <laughs> that it's like a trap. So we need to interact with these people instead of just asking for money. We need to get together so that they can help us to find solutions to the many problems that never end. So my tip to China was like, it, it was a, a discovery of the connection between humanity in most cases. Yeah, I think that is the origin for solutions, and the connection and everything. Yeah, I, there are many things that I, I need to organize because maybe sometimes due to school and uh, other, other activities, maybe I don't have the time to organize everything about the things I found in China because I made so many friends. I took so many pictures and videos, so I need to organize my knowledge and all these things. So I feel there was so much that I found in China, even though I did not have so much money at the time, I was worried because I left, people were still having money. Some are finishing school, are graduating and I'm struggling. So it was hard for me, but still I found that it was just the best experience that I ever had in my life. Mm. <laughs> I think that is going to play a big role in my, my future life, yes. Beautiful. It's just, and what you're talking about is so, so important for people to hear is that like people just want more and more fish. They get, they, they're not doing their own farming. They're not doing their own medicine. They're not doing, going to the source. So they just keep wanting, oh, give me yeah. more fish, give me more fish. And then some people want the whole ocean. <laughs> it's like these some of these uh, white billionaires just, they want the whole ocean. They don't want just 10 fish, 100 fish. They want the whole ocean and then they'll keep taking and taking until it's all gone. Uh, but when you go to somewhere like China or you meet a master of some sort of spirituality anywhere, you'd learn about what you said, the interconnectedness. When you have the interconnectedness, then it's not so much about money. Now it's how can I help you? Because if I can help you, you yes. help me, and then that web goes across the whole planet, then what do you need money for? My neighbor grows cucumbers, and then I give him a Qigong lesson. He's stressed out from farming, yes. all tired. <laughs> we teach him a bit Qigong to help him relax. <laughs> he gives us some vegetables, 
and then it works in that way. But people are so disconnected from source. And for some people, you call that source yeah. God. Some people call it goddess. Some people call it Big Bang. Whatever your source is, yeah. that's where your energy is coming from. And ultimately, you can't do anything without energy. So whether it's Tai Chi Chuan or yeah. yoga or meditation or anything in life that gives you an unlimited source of energy, that is the ideal thing to help heal this planet. And now right now, so many people are obsessed with uh, making sure that they don't get sick. But yeah. they're doing, like you said, they just want to go to the doctor and the doctor gives them the medicine and that's the fish. But they didn't go with their own fishing rod out in their own boat to get that medicine. So they don't really know what's their immune system. They don't know their lymphatic system. They don't know their meridians. They don't know their energy points. They're just trusting that the doctor wants their best interest. And not every doctor wants the best interest for you. Doctors want the money too. They want the fish too. So what Qigong and Chinese medicine shared for me and my life was that I can detox and heal through emotion. I don't need to go and do any sort of external medicine to heal my own being. I've been healthy, so healthy, knock on wood, for ever since I started Reiki. So healthy, not even a little common cold because I went inside. Yeah. Okay, and if I'm feeling stressed and feeling like gonna get sick from stress, okay, I meditate. Okay, I bring in unconditional love. Oh, okay, I go have a detoxifying tea and all of this stuff or do a lymphatic massage to drain out the lymphatic system and clear out everything like that. So that's the real disease that we're fighting here is we're not really fighting uh, a disease that Western medicine can cure. We're fighting a disease that really needs holistic medicine. It means we need to understand that we have energy and this energy, if it's depleted, the physical body will suffer. If there's no oil, if there's no oil in the lamp, if there's no Go. candle wax left in the candle the fire goes out so if your if your body doesn't have that spirit that energy flowing then you people get sick and that's every time people get old what is getting old getting old is they're sick and tired of working all their life <laughs> they run out of energy it's not it's not so oh, they just were unlucky and somebody coughed on them it's not what happened is they were stressed, stressed out so much because this person over <laughs> here was being greedy, <laughs> stealing from their country. This person over here uh, selling them bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> their parents put too much pressure on them. Their ancestors were fucked up. Their ancestors got <laughs> fucked up. And then all this stuff contributes and they say, oh, why am I so stressed? Or stop asking the question, <laughs> go to Eugene, go to Owen, go to somebody who knows about energy and you can heal yourself that way. Yeah. And I took a while to, to shout out the tea I'm drinking, but I have slices of ginger and lemon. Yeah. And what else? I have some. Yes. Uh, mullein leaf that is good for your lungs so this is what i'm saying make your own medicine take your own boat out like you're saying uh your masters taught you go in taking your yeah. own boat out catching the fish lemon ginger mullein all excellent for your immune system excellent for detoxification all of that stuff is medicine yeah. that works for ages and ages and ages 
So I think that's enough, <laughs> enough wow. uh, information from me, but. Yeah. Take a sip of tea and what kind of tea are you okay, using? So... <laughs> The kind of tea I drink is uh, it's called masala, masala chai. This is just Kenyan. It's some masala. It's not really complicated. I don't use complicated tea because I'm still a student. I don't have money to buy expensive tea. I only drank some nice tea in China. I drank the yellow tea, yellow flower tea. Mm. I drank green tea. Yeah. Bolivar tea. Yeah, I drink different types of tea in China. But in Kenya, we don't get the quality tea. We, we buy the cheapest. Yeah. <laughs> it's the cheapest some. tea. But we, we have lemons, we have ginger. But I don't have the habit of drinking that. I, I don't have the habit of using ginger and lemon so much. But at least uh, now I meet you, I'm going to be doing that. <laughs> If you prescribe for me in a in an organized manner, I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah, and in in Kenya as well, you have the the sacred tree, the acacia tree, and uh, I have some of that. Uh, yeah, but my friend, my friend Kareem, he told me about the acacia tree. They make yes. uh, bubble powder and they grind up the bark. And I put that in tea as well. And that's so good for your energy. So good for your spirit. Like that is such a sacred, sacred tree, tree of life over there. Yeah. Okay. So what do you suggest for me if I want to improve my well-being? How, how am I supposed to go about it? Am I supposed to mix tea with ginger or ginger and lemon alone? How, how am I supposed to go about it? Yeah, so with, right now, a lot of people want to boost their immune system. So yes. lemon and ginger, mm -hmm. lemon is great for the digestion. It's got lots of vitamin C. So any, any fruit with a lot of vitamin C will get you purifying your body. Because our body is 72, 75% water. So when we have vitamin C, yeah. vitamin C has been proven for a long time now, this has been proven. Vitamin C purifies water. You can actually use vitamin C to make a water filter, like charcoal also. But uh, I don't know, I have had charcoal lemonade, not charcoal tea, but <laughs> so we have, if you have orange peel, lemon peel, lemon juice, orange juice, anything with a lot of vitamin C is great for now because people want to boost their immunity. Um, and the other thing I suggest is to look at Chinese medicine. So when you look at Chinese yeah. medicine, it's so beautiful, holistic, because it doesn't just look at your body. It doesn't just look at your body. It looks at what it does for your energy, it makes how you make, uh, it makes you to feel within yourself. So that is all personal. Yes. You know, that's what we have the great Google for. That's what we have uh, all of these masters with computers now. There's people all over who have doctorates in Chinese medicine. This tea is good for this. This tea is good for that. And all of that is personal because say one person is sad, they're depressed. St. John's wort, excellent. Yes tea, excellent flower leaf to uh, help alleviate some sadness in life. Something like somebody's going through liver issues. They have something like milk thistle, yeah. which is really common, really pretty cheap medicine too, is really good for the liver. Somebody who is recovering from alcoholism or uh, just wants to in general detoxify their body. So it's like, I, I love, love, love that you brought up the teach a man to fish analogy because that's just going to be so good for people to hear is that's my advice to you as well. Go to uh, the internet, go to the library and just yes. read what is good for what. Herbology books are great, old herbology books. 
are great. Chinese medicine books are great. And it really helps you to not just, okay, my muscles sore, I'm gonna put something on it. No, it's okay, what is deeper here? What am I angry about? What am I sad about? What am I hateful about? And then starting to change your meditation, change your relaxation habits to and eating and drinking tea and juice habits. It's it's so funny. I don't know what's yes. up with my background here today, but <laughs> I, just, I kind of like it, but it just took a while to get this going. And uh, I had uh, <laughs> trying to figure out the background, but we just have my face coming out of uh, actually where my ancestors are from <laughs> in uh, Switzerland and Germany and France. So just yeah. <laughs> it's a funny background, but yeah, life is yeah, a joke. Yeah, it's also, yeah, <laughs> you're rising from the <laughs> it's like you're coming from the water, from the ocean. Yeah, <laughs> from the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Earth is giving birth to you. It's like the, the Earth is, is giving birth to you. <laughs> so yeah, I think that is a that is a good amount of information that we've shared. And I have just coming up to the end of my tea. Yes. So the last thing I'd love to ask you is. Yes. With Tai Chi Chuan, how can becoming yes. a bit softer and more internal, more yin, like Tai Chi Chuan is a, a yin, feminine martial art uh, and has been used by many women. Yes. How can softening and becoming yeah. more gentle make us stronger as men, women, children, what, how has Tai Chi Chuan done that for you? Yeah, for me, becoming soft has made me stronger because I lost the masculinity that makes you want to, to force women. <laughs> because normally as a man, for example, I come from a community called the Luya community, the Luya people. In our community, like a man is, is thought to be more superior than a woman. So you're supposed to ask women to do things for you. You ask them to cook for you. You ask them to do everything for you. So becoming more soft, I, I think I became soft on women and uh, I did not force them into things. And uh, when it comes to men, on meeting men, I found that some men want to force things. So I used to calm them down. For example, someone can book an appointment, then maybe they expect you to be there. But then I ask myself, it's not a must that I, I attend your meeting or something that, for example, they call me in town, in Nairobi town, and I don't have enough time. I cannot run, I cannot rush to go and meet this guy. <laughs> so I have to be soft. I have to, to pretend that maybe I was a little busy. Yeah, you become softer. You don't just rush somewhere because in Africa it's dangerous. Like Africa, there's so much killing in Africa. Someone can seduce you, then they kill you. Even the ladies get killed. So you have to be softer. You cannot go clubbing every day. You cannot go to the club every, every weekend, every other time. You have to be soft. You, you don't have to party all the time because initially when I was standing 20, 21 years, I was doing so many of these things. And I realized that even though at that time I had, I had protection, I was lucky because I used to work at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m. I was lucky. I, so many people liked me, but like right now, so many people don't know about me. They don't know about my past life. So they will think, ah, maybe it's a fierce life. So becoming softer, it made people to start thinking different things about me. So it helped me to focus on myself and finish my tasks and everything that I've been doing over time and everything I continue to do, I do it comfortably because no one is forcing me to do anything. Yeah, okay, so I'm moving in time with the, with the people that are also together with me like you, 
because I've been softer and uh, I can understand people. I give everyone the chance to explain themselves to me. Yeah, so I understand people more. And those who don't understand me with time, they begin to understand me. So being soft has really changed my life in the positive direction. Yeah. Mm. That's such an excellent way of way of life, not just going to the dojo or gym or outside and practicing Tai Chi Chuan, but from what you've said, it's spilled over into your life. And that's that's the beautiful art of Tai Chi Chuan and, and Qigong is that when you change your energy, you change your life. Yes. Everything is energy. And being in a place, as you said, that's physically dangerous, you could get harmed. People think that, oh, okay, so I got to get harder and more brittle and more strong and, and more violent. But like you said, that's the opposite of what keeps you safe. You get safe by becoming like the Taoist masters, like the Tai Chi Chuan masters, like the Qigong masters. They become soft. They become like water, like Bruce Lee says, become like water, my friend. You become like water and you start to flow. And then it doesn't matter if a giant tree falls on you, you splash. It doesn't matter if a giant, even a mountain falls on you. It goes right through yes. because you become soft, you become gentle, you become more kind, more compassionate. And in, in that sense, you have greater resilience. And there's a beautiful, beautiful quote from Lao Tzu, from a Taoist. Uh, he's considered the founder of Taoism, but he was a Taoist sage who wrote the Tao Te Ching. And he said something along the lines of people who are hard and brittle, that's who gets old. That's who snaps and breaks things and gets sick when they're old. People who are soft and gentle, relaxed. That's who has longevity. That's who has real strength that lasts beyond just your youth, goes into mid age to old age. That softness keeps you supple and it's like a big tree. Yes. If a big tree is dry, has no water, has no softness, how easy is it is to break, how easy it is to uproot or, or uh, snap. But when you have a tree that's by the river, soaking up all that water, becoming flexible, you can start to move through life and, and move through even a hurricane and stay rooted and stay planted. So that's a, that's a beautiful bit of wisdom to uh, bring this talk uh, coming up to a close. And just, it was great having you, Eugene. And if you have anything else to say before we go to everyone, then feel free to go ahead and, and say that for us. Yeah, okay. The first thing is, uh, the first Owen I knew from England is Michael Owen. You know him? <laughs> oh, is the, the actor. Michael Owen, this guy who played. The footballer. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Owen, the footballer. He played for Liverpool and Manchester United, Newcastle. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're talking about football. You're not a football fan. I like basketball. Ah, football, so I'm from New York City. I'm from, I like basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I like the New York ah, Knicks. Ah, New York. Unfortunately. <laughs> oh. So you, you from, you, and uh, you know Jimmy Kimmel? You know Jimmy Kimmel? Yeah, yeah. 50 Cent. Ah, New York, you are, you are very famous people, you guys yeah. from New York. <laughs> My wife is British, so I live here okay. now in this right, so right another... here. Right there. There it is. This is the United ah. Kingdom. <laughs> and then we got... Ah! Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. So another thing is, uh, I, I I connected with, uh, with someone, some guys from Paris and Spain. I was teaching. I have a student who is currently living in Ibiza, Spain. She's female and uh, it is something 53 years. So I teach at Tai Chi and um, she taught me some meditation. Yeah, so we, we made contact in uh, July, June, July last year during the, the quarantine. So she also helped me to meditate because she's a specialist in meditation. So we were extending the knowledge so I think with time, it has helped me to remember so many things and to grow also spiritually. Oh. We got, I think you accidentally muted for a second. Oh, there you go. Now we can hear you. Oh, sorry, sorry, someone was calling. It was someone interrupting the session. Oh, it's all good. Okay. Okay, so, okay, we shall continue to communicate. Yeah, Lord. Okay? Yeah, definitely. Stay in touch, brother. And it's been excellent talking with you. And for everyone who see this video and wants to connect with Eugene, uh, I'm going to put down in the links below his yes. Instagram, and then you have a YouTube as well, right? Oh. Yes, okay. I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm like, I do not have videos. Cool, so <laughs> we will put that link down below. Okay. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you, Eugene, for sharing this beautiful space and this beautiful wisdom and carrying this legacy of Tai Chi Chuan, carrying this Chi energy through us all. And as you learned in China, Xie Xie. Xie Xie Ni. Enjoy your day, brother. And maybe we'll have another talk another time soon. Enjoy your, your day also. See you. Peace. Okay.